Oh, hello, 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 and welcome back. Uh, I'm back on air, boys and girls. After a brief, I think about six weeks, uh, after leaving home times and the Dr. Kevin, uh, the Dr. Kevin show, we are back. We are back on Facebook. We're back on LinkedIn. We're back on YouTube. And we're back on IPM Nation at IPMNation.com. Only now, ta-da! We have a little angel singing in the background. It is now the Kevin Ross Emery Show with... Ashley Olstein. Hi, everybody. And we want you to know that we are changing to all of these formats so that you can actually be part of the conversation. You can type in questions and chat and talk to us about what you would like to talk about. We are, this show, uh, you know, I've been on air for 20 years now and in lots of different radio stations and lots of different formats. And this latest format is practical, period, spiritual, period, advice, period. And as I warned you at near the end of my closing days at Ohm Times, Ashley was deciding whether she thought she could put up with me. <laughs> I guess you decided you could, huh, Ash? I certainly can. <laughs> Give it the good old college try. Give it the good old college try. So this format is going to be very different. We will still have um, some guests. Uh, our guests are going to be coming in a little bit, tiny bit later in the show and leaving a little earlier um, because Ashley and I want to leave time to have some practical spiritual advice answering for questions you guys have, uh, to chat about different spiritual topics that you might be interested in. and you know, to engage you and give you time, whether you're looking for some kind of big spiritual question or tiny little spiritual question. They're all valid. All questions are valid. Um, and to, uh, to do that, we're also changing a little bit of the format. The first show of the month, we are going to keep uh, as with me and Matt Connerton, which I've been doing for over well over a decade now. Uh, where Matt and I always do the first show to kind of take a spiritual peek at the political scene. Um, and Ashley may or may not come on those shows. She She's not a political creature. Is that a fair <laughs> yeah, statement? Yeah, very fair statement. I try to um, only find out what I need to to get by in this crazy world. There we go. So, um, but we're not going to be doing uh, the third week of the month astrology. Uh, it, I'm happy to say for Rob, he's moving on. Rob Stewart is from InnerCenterAstrology.com is moving on to other endeavors. And now you're going to get the astrology ready for the face plant from me. <laughs> we'll see how this works out until some poor astrologer takes pity on me uh, and does that. So we're going to start each show each week to talk a little bit about just the astrology that week instead of a whole show. What do you what do you think about that idea? Do, do you think that's, you know, are you excited by it? Do you, are you leery? What are your thoughts, Ashley, about doing the weekly, doing it as a, as a weekly thing? I actually really like it. Sometimes the month is a little bit too extrapolated out and um seems kind of far away and then you forget about what we talked about in the episode for the astrology three weeks later it happens and they don't necessarily go together i think by taking a little smaller bite and looking at the week we can kind of bob and weave as we need to through the planetary influences so i am uh so we're again we're inviting you with chat to chat in to see what the you know what questions or comments you might have as always in all of my shows the only thing we ask is that your questions or comments are respectful it's very important that you can disagree with us you can disagree with the guest 
I mean, but it always has to be respectful. So before I jump into the astrology, Ashley, what, what do you want to get out of doing this show? Like, what are, what are your goals? What are your, what are you hoping for? And I'm throwing her under the bus. She didn't know this question was coming. I didn't know this question was coming until it came out of my, my mouth. This is, I'm going to tell you, this is water. You can choose to believe me or not. You can choose to believe me too. But um, what am I looking to get out of this? Um, I really love trying to help people and help people navigate through this um, difficult human existence. It's not easy, especially these days. And I think if people can lean in a little bit more, which I've learned for myself, into their own spirituality, their own higher self, kind of tune into you know, your soul and your guides and really just kind of um, stop relying on your brain and rely more on your heart and um, it can get a little bit easier. So however I can help people kind of glide through this existence a little better, that's what I'm shooting for. I think that that's valid and, you know, when we discover our own spiritual connection and um, we lean into it. Some people, and I know you know this, are get very evangelical. They want to go and tell everybody, start quoting all of the top 10 this week's list of spiritual books and Sometimes I'm going to say this trite little sayings that magically change your life. Just say it. Your life will change. <laughs> I mean, there are things I've said that have changed my life, like not guilty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we engage in kind of, you know, the, the, the people that start to get excited that, you know, for whatever reason, they get really excited about spirituality, which is, can be a good thing. But then sometimes they can get a little um, overly effusive. Would you agree? I do. I think, um, yeah, it's not a one size fits all sweater. I think that sometimes people just yeah <laughs> get a little too excited about it and um can't can't temper it a little bit if that makes sense yeah so i'm gonna ask you uh, you know i'm gonna go over the astrology because we're gonna do astrology at the at the beginning of every show if you're into astrology if one of the things you liked about the old dr kevin show was um the astrology we did know that we'll do astrology pretty much within the first 10 or 15 minutes and then we're going to move to our guests and then we will open up time for people to ask questions that's going to be the normal format more or less um so uh but i'm gonna give you uh you know i'm gonna ask you to think about this and then I'll get back to you after I do the astrology. So I'm not putting you on the spot. <laughs> uh, if you ever talk to any of my other old co-hosts, they're all going to tell you, never believe him. He, 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 doesn't, he really doesn't mean to put you on the spot. He just doesn't recognize what that looks like. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, but... You know, we want our listeners to ask us what are their spiritual questions. We might even give you a psychic hit here or there. We may or maybe we may not. I mean, Ashley and I both, um, you know, have been doing psychic work for, well, I've been doing it for longer than I want to admit because I'm not that old. And, um, you know, Ashley gets to decide if she's going to admit, admit, admit how long she's been doing it because it might be an in, 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 indic, indicate her age. 
It's her choice. <laughs> uh, um, so, anyways, but um, except for Dart, everybody's newer than me. <laughs> Let's just be honest. All the people I started doing psychic work. Are now on the other side, and people are are, are talking them to them through mediumship. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, anyways, but I'm going to start by talking about the astrology. Sun entered Aries on 3:20. Aries is I am. It is a fire sign, and wherever Aries is is in your chart. This is where your sun energy is going to be. And so one of the things that we always talked about on planetary influences was the fact that, um, you know, the more you pull up your chart, you know your chart, you have your chart done, that you can look at it, that you can take this weekly visit with Ashley and I and kind of look and say, oh, okay, this is where it's going to work for me. Now, sometimes we would put put Rob on the spot. Hopefully Rob is watching. Hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. To say, oh, you're chatting in. He's like, this was my first time to be off. I'm not watching. Uh, <laughs> but uh, is I'm actually going to be applying some of this stuff to Ashley's chart and to my chart as kind of like, how do you take it to the next level? We so did so sometimes on planetary influence, but I always kind of sort of think I put Rob on the spot when I would <laughs> ask him to do that. So I have decided to not put myself on the spot and I have prepared the notes to include that. <laughs> so, um, so the sun entered Aries and again, I am, it's, all about new beginning energy in a way. It's the first sign in the zodiac with that passion, with that fire. Um, it's, it's what we call cardinal energy, which is the energy of getting things started. And if you are familiar with astrology, you know you, uh, you know you have four cardinal signs that start different parts, uh, different areas of your life, different parts of who you are. And then you have fixed signs where you stabilize and then you have mutable where it's time to make change and change things up. But as a cardinal sign, it goes in there and it's going to always be looking for in the next adventure, the new thing, the new passion, the new thing it can get started. Now, whether it stays with it or not, kind of depends on how much Aryan energy you have. This sun is going to be here. Um, till 419. But when you look at something like Sun and Aries, you should also look and say, where is Aries in my house? And most people's charts are going to have a delineation where you will have a house. Now think of, think, we call them houses. I always like to call it, these are rooms in the house of you, right? So we have Ashley, in Ashley's chart or my chart, we have these rooms that we call houses, but they're just different parts of our life and our relationships and who we are. So Ashley, the sun enters uh, entered on 320 into your seventh house. And that is a house of partnerships. It means that the spotlight's going to be on partnerships. They don't have to be romantic partnerships, but they're going to be partnerships. Now, one of the other things that's important about having your chart, and if you don't have a chart or you would ever like to get a chart done and understand it and be able to say, hey, I would like to use my astrology as one of the tools on the tool belt, you can always uh, contact me at info at kevinrossemory.com and set up a chart, uh, a chart appointment. Um, but if you do have your chart, then the next thing we want to look at is, is that sun going to be dinging anything? Like, is it going to be fighting with anything? Is it going to be supporting anything? Is it going to be helping anything? And in your case, it shows right up. And, you know, really the first thing it does is it just cuddles right up to your Venus. 
And so, you know, Venus is the planet of, of sometimes it's beauty and love and values and all of these different things. And it's already there. Right now, you're being asked to show that spotlight of the sun to figure out who I am, who am, who am I in partnerships, what are my values, what brings me joy, what brings me beauty. And that sun will also hit your Chiron, which is the wounded healer, where you're going to have to show that spotlight of where, you know, what, what has wounded me in this life and how do I take that energy and make my life or maybe even make the world a better place by what I've done. Does all that make sense? Um, well, I'll let you know more next week, but I think it does make sense. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think and, so. And so all I wanted to do is, again, I wanted to explain to our listeners how much having your chart available uh, how much having your chart available would be like, where is Aries in my chart? You know, I have a very different, your Aries is seventh and eighth house. Right now it's in the seventh house this week. So this is where this is going to be. Um, this is where the energy is going to be. It's not going to be the whole time in Aries in your seventh house. At some point it finds into your eighth house, but that's a few weeks away. This time, as we look at it, um, you know, it's that's where you're going to divide that Aries energy. This is important for you guys to know because that's where, let's think of the sun. It's the biggest thing in the universe. This is where you're coming in and making, um, you know, m that, that the sun is focusing you on what's important. Now, like in my case, it's, it's between my fourth and fifth house but it doesn't ding anything. It doesn't cuddle up to anything within those houses, though it may have, you know, it may have a few energies here or there um, to other things. But so I'm starting there, even though that's already happened, but we always want to know where the sun is. And since we didn't have uh, an astrology show last month because we were off air as we did new rebranding, I wanted to pick it up with um, what's going on now. So the now on 329, I don't think I did all of these in order. So on 325, the next thing I want to mention for this week, because this is this week's thing, and I have information all over the place. So when you see me looking, uh, that's what I'm doing. Welcome to the new show. Welcome to the new format. Um, and uh, welcome as we uh, are still figuring out all the kinks in our first week here with StreamYard doing live streaming. So you get to go <laughs> um, and laugh at us. Uh, so the next thing we want to look at is we have that full moon on March 25th, and it's an eclipse. The full moon on March 25th, and it's eclipse, and it's in Libra. Now, a full moon, I always look at it when it brings things to fullness. When we look at, like, where were we on that new moon six months ago? What did we put into place? Stuff like this. How is it coming to fruition? But, new, but full moons are also about illumination. Where is the where is it illum being illuminated? Um, it's it's you know it's like having sun like having a sun in the middle of you know uh, the night, but you can't see it's the sun, so it illuminates. Um, one of the things here is that it the full moon eclipse eclipses, they add extra power. They add a lot of extra power to stuff. Um, and because it's in Libra, we're talking about, you know, relationships, partnerships. So there we go. Partnerships again. You got mm -hmm. your, son and your house of partnerships, Ashley. Yep. So this is a double, a double. I'm going to call it a win. 
a double win. <laughs> double win. Extra, extra astrological energy. My partners might disagree, but <laughs> extra win. <laughs> it's an extra win. Um, and so for you, uh, this is happening in your first house. And with a full moon eclipse in your first house in Libra, again, guys, I'm talking Ashley's chart. You have to look at your chart. You have to get your chart out and go, God, where is five degrees of Libra? Because that's where it's happening. And that's where it's going to hit me. And that's where things are going to come to a head. And that's where I'm going to have to look at, do I have balance in my life? Because it's in Libra and it's illuminating where I may not have balance or I need to shift stuff or, you know, where am I out of balance and what do I need to do to feel like I'm in balance? And for you, it's all first house stuff. And it is in five degrees of Libra and you have Uranus in seven degrees of Libra. So that means that they're going to be playing together. So it's going to be very unexpected. For you, this illumination will come into some unpredictable um, surprise ways what you're going to understand. And again, that's on the 25th. So as this is going on, that moon is will continue to take that eclipse energy forward and directly hit you, Uranus, where you're kind of looking for, for that kind of um, unexpected, unique. Um, they also say that, you know, because when we look at Uranus, we're, we're associating it a lot with Aquarius, that it has that electrical energy. Um, so on the 25th, 26th, 27th, um, it could be technology stuff, but it's also going to ask you, where are you out of balance within yourself? And where do you need to balance self and make some decisions? Um, Mine's in my house of career. Mine's up in my 10th house. So that's where I'm going to be getting that illumination. Now, the other thing that's going on during this time period, and then this is really the last aspect to go over. We've got some big stuff, but not a lot of stuff. So um, we've got three big things kind of going on in a way. And the other one is the sun conjuncting Neptune. It already happened, but Neptune, it's going to stay in energy of what I would call a conjunction. Um, and it is when Neptune conjuncts the sun, it is the shattering of illusions. Hmm. It's the shattering of illusions. And in your case, where the sun and and are conjecting uh, are are um, conjuncting is your sixth house, sixth house, which is a house of service. It's also a house of health. And your seventh house, the energy is going to move into the house of partnerships. So this is talking about. You have the full moon that's going to illuminate. Um, and you have this power boost. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, when you decide you're you're going to do three shots of espresso in your coffee. <laughs> because it's going to shatter illusions and it's going to make you feel like you have to take action. That you have to take action. That... You know, it falls into one of those things um, where if we don't, um, if we don't recognize something, whether it's conscious or unconscious, we can avoid it. When we go, eee. Is that what I was doing? Is that what I was thinking? Is that what I was avoiding? Sometimes we can continue to still avoid it. Sometimes we can say, no, no, no. La, 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 la. We can do the three monkeys. I have the three monkeys here somewhere. But anyways. Um, yeah, there they are. I actually had a 
a client, you probably can't see it very well, give me these three little monkeys because they said that <laughs> this is how they showed up to work with me. And I pried, a, I, I pried off all their hands before I was done. I'm not sure. Was that a compliment, Ash? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you can take it for however you want it to be. <laughs> um, but anyways, so with this going on, it's really a one-two punch. It's the shattering of illusions. Mm. It's about balance. And it's about um, illuminating things. So they're from two different positions, but they're bringing very crossover harmonious energy. Um, and again, that is, you know, the sun conjunct, it, it hit exact conjunct, but I look at that it's going to stay in conjunct energy um, for a while longer. It just hit conjunct in the last 24, 36 <laughs> hours. Um, but there's a time when planets are still close to enough together that that conjunct energy where they're feeding each other goes on. So I promise to get better at doing this astrology stuff. Maybe I shouldn't take notes because when I do it, did it on the old show, I just always pulled it out of my head. The minute I take notes, I'm like, <laughs> I I instead of going, I know what that means. <laughs> okay. Questions. Huh? I said, we'll try it that way next time. Uh, no, I think I, I should probably just, um, all of my friends that are out there, just be kind to me over the next few weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I'm kind of waiting to see where, uh, where that hits me. I mean, one of the things is, is I'm in heavy application. Um, and interestingly enough, the way things are, it's hitting my career house as well. So yeah, um, there's some big things, but that's the beauty of astrology. It doesn't make your decisions. Doesn't, it's not meant to tell you what to do. It is always giving you more information with which to make better decisions. So that's that part. So Ashley, what were some of your first big spiritual questions that you wanted to know that you were like, oh, what does this mean? Or what is it? Why? Like, because again, I want to, I, I, I want us to be able to provide practical spiritual advice to our people. Where did, where did your journey start? Um, well, my journey was kind of a staccato start. It started when I was younger and then it went away for a long time and then started coming back as I got older, uh, a different stage in my life. Um, and it just, for me, it came back as this insatiable curiosity. Like I just wanted to know more tell me, you know, teach me this, tell me this. I, I just really sought out as many teachers as I could to just gather information. Um, I think, you know, some of the SIPs that we've done in the past and the SIP, I don't know if anybody knows, it was the, um, I'm sorry, Kevin, spiritual something panel, spiritual, spiritual, interactive, interactive. Panel. Thank you. I just, again, on the spot. Um, so we've addressed some of these things in those panels that have been really um, things that I was thinking about in the beginning of my, you know, spiritual unfolding. Um, and so some of those things are like, soul contracts or guides or what is a soul what makes it different like is a spirit a soul is a soul a spirit what's my higher self it can be kind of confusing to figure out what part plays what and i think everyone's interpretation could be a little different and there's some things that are just make better sense than others for me well you know and one of the things is because, you know, I, I want to mention that we have the SIP panels, the spiritual interactive panels that we have. Um, we have them once a month. And I invite, you know, I 
moderate the panel and I'm on the panel. Hi. Just kept going. <laughs> Drew, you mentioned those um, <laughs> IT issues coming up this month. There was one. Sorry. I told you. See, thank you. <laughs> um, is that uh, with the SIP panels, you know, Ashley's done some now that she's, you know, gotten, been doing her journey and, um, you know, has got to the point where you've been journeying for a long time and now you work as a spiritual practitioner and do psychic readings and do healings and do all of this stuff. Um, but w w the panel that I moderate is bringing in people, you know, not always the same people. Some people have an expertise in more than one area than the other. But when we bring somebody in, um, it's because they have a spiritual perspective. But one of the things I tell people, and I'd love to hear how, you know, like, was it confusing or was it helpful or whatever, when you have spiritual teachers saying things that don't feel like they jive. That and, happens to me, yeah. Yeah, because on the SIP panel, I always tell people, we're all spiritual professionals of some sort. We're all teachers. We all have practices. We have varying you know, time and service that we've done it, but we're not always going to agree. We're not always going to look at it the same way. And it's not that anyone is wrong. It's just different. And that you should take what resonates to you. Do you do you remember what it was like the first time when a spiritual teacher said something and you were like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they don't, but 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 that spiritual teacher said something else. <laughs> Who do I believe? Yeah, well, well, it was something that rubbed up against my beliefs and what I had always felt was true for me. And it was an absolute in this um in this one teaching that it this was the way that this group felt about it was about reincarnation and it really rubbed me the wrong way. But my core belief in that is what helped me decide that that wasn't really where I fit in with that, with that school of thought. Um, so I was able to say, I'm going to take some of what they're teaching me, but I'm going to just go this way. So it actually was very helpful for me. You know, one of the things was that, um, you know, I've always, I've always put it this way. Like if this um, resonates to you, take it. Yep. I've also always said, you know, if you're coming to one of my classes, if you're working with me and you take something, make sure you give me credit. This is what I do for a living. You know, I'm not above self-promoting. Uh, <laughs> if it doesn't resonate to you, just leave it. Just be like, okay, yeah, that didn't work for me. It might work for you in the future. It might never work for you. It doesn't make any difference. If it's, you know, I mean, it's like there's a bunch of stuff on the side of the road and you pull over or you go to a yard sale and you go, well, some of this stuff I can't buy. Like I have no use for it. It doesn't fit in. It's whatever. I mean, it's the same thing as you're looking through spiritual practices and teachers and books and stuff like this. I mean, and if it doesn't, we have a new star on the show. Morgana. Say hello, Morgana. <laughs> um, if it doesn't um, resonate, just leave it. Now, if it really gets under your skin, if it irritates you, and I've always said, then you probably really need to look at it. Like, what's the irritation? What's bothering you? Because there's something there. Um, recently somebody said that it felt like that when I said it that way, and I've been saying it that way, you know, I've been full time, full time in practice for 34 years now that, you know, it sounded as if I might not be, uh, I, I might be rubbing up against somebody's trauma. They may be irritating because it's trauma to them. It's traumatic to them in some way. Um, but I think that it, 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 
you have to still, you can look at it and say, is this hitting a trauma button for me? And there's one way to deal with it. But if you go, you know, that's just not true. Then you probably need to look at like, why do you have so much energy with it not being true? Instead of just saying, oh, it's not mine. One way that they, this experience taught me was what if this was true? So just try it on and just think about it like, okay, I believe this and I have all my life, but what if this were true? How does that fit in to me? And it may that it doesn't fit in, or it may give you a different lens to look at the situation and see what fits better or best at that point in your life. So, but I think exposing yourself with an open mind and let's face it right now, we need all of this full, full moon eliminate, uh, illumination we can get. We need all of this, you know, getting breaking illusions that we can get because there's a lot of people that are walking around like my three monkeys, mm -hmm. not wanting to even consider somebody else's point of view, even consider um, a different way to look at things. It's, yeah. you know, and... I look at it and on, you know, sometimes I get energized by it. I can't help myself. But the most of the time I get sad. I get sad that so many people are living in survival mode because to me, a closed mind is a sign of somebody who is in survival mode. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that's a pretty accurate way to look at it. I think um, I think we bump into a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis that are in survival mode, um, especially these days. Yep, and it's almost like it's beyond their bandwidth to even consider something else because they're holding on by their fingernails to life. Like they just feel like they're just getting through. Yeah. And you can't throw me one more curve. And, you know, unfortunately, people that live in su survival mode, besides the fact that they really cause lots of issues for themselves on, on a lot of different levels, I really think it contributes to a lot of the health issues that we're seeing today. Oh, definitely. I think when you internalize that stuff, the energy has to go somewhere and it can, you know, become destructive to oneself for sure. Yeah. You know, I used to, cause I, you know, one of the things I do is I do work as a medical intuitive and I'm always very clear Though I'm a doctor, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not diagnosing, I'm not prescribing, I can just tell you, you know, what information I get from talking to your body, you do what you want to do with it. Um, and things like this, but I used to try to point out to people that, you know, you know, we talk about how our emotions, you know, eat us alive. And yeah. The other thing that you would hear people talk about being eaten up by is what? Cancer. All you had to do was exchange the two words. Yeah, it's energy. Same sentence. So when you keep in all of this negative self-talk, you keep all this stuff in that just basically beats you up internally and does things, you know, counterproductive to your immune system and your ability to, you know, and in that place, make a lot of bad choices as well. You know, and of course, we know how much I mean, now, it's common to hear people talk about, well, you know, like being depressed is going to have negative effects on your health. There was a time when in my lifetime, when they separated, like emotions were irrelevant to physically getting healthy. Like you just do the stuff. Like, right, right. You know. 
this, all of this is kind of um, reminding me, you had a newsletter that just came out the other day that talked about, you know, dreams versus vision versus nightmare. And one thing that stuck out for me in that uh, newsletter was talking about the nightmare and the way you defined it in this particular conversation was about um, basically not living up to your own whatever dream vision, like who you one really is, but to um, fill the idea of you from somebody else's perspective and, and what kind of damage that does to somebody. Um, so it's kind of reminding me of what we're talking about now. Yeah. You know, it's, we've all heard, be careful what you ask for. You may get it. Mm. And a lot of people ask for visions and dreams that are to prove something to somebody else, are to live oh, yeah. something for somebody else, to make somebody else happy. And when they get it and their life is miserable, they've achieved their dreams, it's, it's imploding. Like, I worked this hard to get here for what? I, I hate it. I mean, I, I hear that all the time with my clients. Like, I fought so hard to blah, blah. And it just breaks my heart when I hear story after story about people who, who realized that they were other than cisgendered heterosexual whatever they were on the scale and that they would try to pray, like pray the gay away, pray the urges away, pray the feelings they were in the wrong body away, that they would be encouraged that somehow they weren't praying hard enough to be what everybody else wanted them to be, you know, at the same time being preached at, <laughs> you know, God doesn't make mistakes. Well, duh. God didn't make a mistake. You love who you love. You're drawn to who you're drawn to. You feel like you feel. <coughs> so either God makes mistakes or you didn't read that part of the memo. That, you know. Is, lost in translation. Yeah, lost in translation. And, you know, and I hear it over and over again about the journey of self-persecution. That, that people that don't fit into the heteronormative ideas and values of what it is so uh, of what they're supposed to be but i mean there's all sorts of places where we think we're living our dream to only discover it's a nightmare um so i'm going to go back to the the sip thing for a second mm -hmm. um i know you really wanted to do our last sip and you got you know and you had some things that came up that didn't allow you to be on that panel you've been on some of our sit panels and yeah i'm assuming in the future you'll be on more of our sit panels indeed and i want to i wanted to let people know uh our game plan is that we will be moving our zip panels from zoom only invitation over to trying it in this format where they're live and people can show up for them so make sure that you are liking where, where liking me, liking this page, wherever you're seeing this, whether it's on YouTube or, or LinkedIn or Facebook, wherever it is, make sure that you're getting in the loop of information. Um, and we'll talk at some point of about some SIPs that are coming up. Um, but this last week we just did soul contracts. And I know you really wanted to do soul contracts. So I want to give you an opportunity before I dive into a place where I might have been a little bit at odds with some of the other panelists. Yes and no, but I'll 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 get oh, your <laughs> take on it. <laughs> All right, as I step off the cliff to see if I'm at odds with you or not. Wow. Um, <laughs> step off the cliff and fly. Yeah. So. Um, Soul contracts. Um, I chose this. That was, you know, the tagline was, huh? Um, I do think that 
um, each of us has a plan as we are, you know, brought into our human existence and, um, you know, before, before we're born, that we make a plan who the people in our lives are going to be and what we will be on earth to experience. Um, and sometimes people just want to cruise control and they just come in and they just want it to be an okay life without a lot of bumps and turns and cruise right through. Um, I do think that, that, there's a lot of us who look at some of the strife that we've gone through and say, like, if you think of it in this lens of, I chose this, um, I think that we are all here to learn and compile experiences, um, ways to become more empathetic to our fellow man. Um, and I, I think that the 80 years-ish plus or minus, that we're here goes by like a blip to spirit. I think it's the turn of a page. So it may feel eternal to us. Um, it really is just a quick, you go in, you get out. Um, and so it's a, it's a school. We're learning different um, experiences. They could be really positive and they could be really negative. Like who would choose to be falsely imprisoned for their life? I don't know. But there's a huge learning experience that's very rich with that, that spirit will take back and it will create empathy for others. Well, you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, it's, <laughs> I start by always talking about separating out that w the idea that we get stuck very easily in human love and human compassion. It is a far greater stretch for us to actually look at something from a perspective of divine love and divine compassion. Yeah. And I, I'm going to add to those two the word purpose, human purpose and divine purpose. Mm -hmm. The divine purpose is about us having experiences. The divine doesn't judge any experience as greater or lesser. Yeah. So in the human, we want to go, I wouldn't have done this on purpose. Well, no, as the human walking in the body, you did not choose in this body, in this mind, you made choices along the way. Right. And we all, you know, soul contracts. I think I described because, you know, I've looked at people with, this was what your life plan was before you were born. And it looks always looks to me like a tapestry that you would find on a castle in Germany that went for half a mile because, you know, big old castle tapestry. This is what it's going to look like. And all those little threads have crossovers and the crossovers are soul contracts. And then you get into life and free will hits. Whether it's your free will choice that zigged or zagged or somebody else's free will choice, you went to pick up a thread and the thread wasn't there for you to pick up because mm -hmm. they weren't there. Or you went to get the thread, but you didn't make the connection you needed to make. And, you know, so there's just all sorts of stuff because, you know, I'm, I will always remember the first time I saw the tapestry for a client that asked me to look. And then I started going, well, and you went off here and then you went off here. And then this came in here to try to repair this over there. And I started, and I was like, oh, this is like my kittens playing with a big ball of yarn, maybe a basket of big balls of yarn that have all got kind of clawed in and, you know, and played with of you don't die with that tapestry in place. No. Nobody dies with that tapestry <laughs> perfectly in place. But so here was the thing. And I'm not saying that we majorly disagreed. Um, oh, but it was more, it was kind of a perspective thing. Because we had a couple of different people that asked questions about breaking soul contracts. Oh. Hmm. And some of the practitioners were like, well, you do this and this and this to break a soul contract. And I was like... Mm, don't no. I I we can fulfill it. We can leave it unfulfilled, mm -hmm. but break it. 
It doesn't, you know, the contract doesn't get broken. One or both of the individuals chose to do things that nullified. But every time it, it was so funny because I'm sitting there on the panel and these are people I respect and I respect the fact that they have a different view. And both panelists were using the break and they, and, and we had people ask, how do I break a soul contract? And the first thing I'm like, you don't, you don't break a contract. You check in to see, has the contract become null and void? Mm -hmm. That maybe somebody that you were in contract with didn't show up and make the right choices or do the right things, but you don't break it. And every time they said break, I'd go. Ugh. Yeah, I think I would have cringed as well. You know? And I just, yeah, that doesn't feel right to, to what I know. From yeah. And I, and I, and I respect the fact that, you know, not everybody has the same reaction response to words that, that I do, or we have reaction and responses to different words. Again, I'm not minimizing any of the wisdom that mm -hmm. the panelists brought in. They brought in a ton of wisdom. You can go into YouTube and you can search New Hampshire metaphysical and you can find the place where the, the, these are housed and you can go watch them. I mean, we make them available. They're free to attend and then we make them available for people to learn from. Um, but yeah, that was my, my big thing with soul contracts was I just come on going, ah, no, 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 don't talk about breaking them. On a similar vein, but a little bit different, I also think I wanted to interject and just say, I think that, um, so say you miss an opportunity, you know, to fulfill your soul contract, and this might be soul purpose or soul contract with somebody else, but it could be an individual thing. I think the universe is going to keep putting that speed bump in your way to see if you can go over it and kind of, you know, put another card in your Rolodex of, of information that you have. And, it, and you know, if you miss it again, I think the universe will give you that opportunity. And I think rather than breaking that contract, you can kind of steer around it and avoid it and not actually fulfill that yeah. task. It's almost like, you know, going through chutes and ladders. You, know, you can go all the way around or you can do the soul contract and go down the, the chute. Well, you know, a lot of times soul contracts are well i mean actually i think that they all are trying to fulfill the purpose of you becoming who you're here to be in this lifetime yeah. have the experiences you came in to have bring the things into balance do whatever and so every soul contract has a purpose and when we get to the place where we have we look at the purpose if somebody drops their side of a soul contract then, then the contract with them has gone null and void. Yeah. Somebody else can say, hey, I'm coming in and I can add this and, and I can offer you the opportunity yeah. to still fulfill the purpose and be able to see what else um, is going on. But I know we've only got five or six minutes left. This time went pretty fast. I don't know. How did it go for you? Was it Tony <laughs> time or Einstein time? Um, the time went pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a couple of things coming up I want to talk about. Um, I have a fair this weekend. I'm in Newburyport at the GG Psychic Fair on Saturday. So this Saturday, uh, you can... Find more information on it on my Facebook page. You can also go to uh, Gigi Spiritual Awakening page, I believe it is. Um, I don't know if we'll get a link thrown on before we end or not. Um, I should have prepared it ahead of time, but I didn't. So, um, but it is in Newburyport, Mass. It is on Saturday. And it is from 10 to 4. So there's going to have vendors. I'm going to be there doing psychic readings. And uh, so come, you can come see me then uh, if you'd like to have an in-person reading. Uh, if you would like to check out what Ashley does and have a session with her, 
you can look at, uh, she's got her website at the bottom. www.solsticeintuitivearts.com. Um, I am kevinrossemery.com. Um, and you can always come and schedule time with me there if you'd like, whether it's for an astrology chart or a psychic reading or any of the other 5,000 things I do. Oh. By the way, <laughs> Kevin does my astrology chart, if you didn't notice. Um, and it's fantastic. I, um, I look forward to it. I do it at least once a year. Sometimes I do it a little more often than that. But um, it's a birthday present to myself. And I make a map of the year and I put little notes in my calendar. And it's been really lovely. I've done it for a few years now. And I thank you. Thanks, Dr. Kim. <laughs> thank you. Um, and our next zip isn't until April. It's April 21st. Um, stay tuned for more information. It's still a little ways away, uh, but April 21st, and it's on what is indigeneity. In, um, and so it talks about indigenous, and we're going to have a panel that's going to talk about the difference between um, ancestral bloodline indigenous versus soul indigenous, and kind of what does it mean? Next week on our radio show, we have um, Matt Gill. Matt Gill. Matt Gill, who does, who has a website called Do the Damn Thing. Um, I was recently at an event with Matt. He uh, is energetic, and I'm excited to have him. Uh, and he kind of talks about the rewards of authenticity. I think is the best way to put it. The rewards of authenticity. Now I look forward to hearing more from him. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I think you'll like Matt. Matt yeah. Gill. Uh, <laughs> any closing ideas or thoughts? Oh, there you go. Putting me on the spot again. Um, no, I think that um, I love this new format. It's nice to see your face and um, rather than just hear your lovely voice. Um, I think that we'll have to get um, people to encourage people to write in some questions and some topics that they want to actually hear about. So I think it's going to be really great. I'm looking, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. This is our first, you know, this is our first show. I mean, I've been off air for six weeks and some people may still be going to the old place that you found me. Don't go there anymore, but I'm pretty confident we're going to put this show out and remind people that 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on every Thursday, the Kevin Ross Emery Show with Ashley Olstein. Uh, will be coming at a social media platform near you. And then uh, the uh, to be able to chat, share ideas, ask questions, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You could catch us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. And all of those, I believe, have formats where you can chat in questions. I know Facebook and YouTube does. I'm assuming LinkedIn does, but I don't know. I'm on the side. Um, of the show. So that's our next week's guest. Uh, we Reminder have for everyone to, um, if you have your birth chart, have it handy. Why not? Um, and then you could, uh, you know, type in questions about specific things that relate to your birth chart. Um, and that way we can, we being Kevin, because I'm still learning about astrology from him, um, he can interpret it for you. Okay. Um, and I'm going to close tonight's show with with the definition um, that I've been using for years, one of my own quotes, which is my quote on empowerment. Empowerment is the power to be uniquely who you are without apology. Beautiful. On that note, namaste. Namaste. Bye, everyone.